Hey everyone, so last week I had a lot of you in a, a video that I did writing in the comments saying to me have you seen the price increases that have come out from Louis Vuitton and Chanel and you really got me interested because a lot of you a lot of you were saying in the comments that the price rises um, even some of you in the UAE were saying prices here have gone up by 7 to 17 percent and I thought what honestly honestly it's not that I didn't believe any of you it's that I thought that can't possibly be true no business surely would be silly enough to do that. During a global pandemic, you would think to increase your prices by such an obscene amount of money, there's so much uncertainty, people might have lost their jobs, people aren't on full pay, people are self-employed in, in the UK, you know, not getting any help at all. There's so much uncertainty, and of all the times to be putting your prices up, now is not it, in my opinion. But here, here is the information. So you were all telling me it was between seven and 17%. I've done a bit of research and there is a place that I really recommend if you wanted to get more information on this, go and check out Purse Blog. I'm gonna link below to the article which a lot of this information has come from because not just the author of that article but loads of the people commenting in the comment section. It was very insightful because you're kind of getting people's first, not just opinions, but people's first hand experience, I guess. I just very quickly need to clarify that the prices I'm gonna go through are, are only based on the EU. I don't have any information at the moment about the US, Asia Pacific, or the UK. And if you're watching this and you're kind of like, oh, I wanna know conversion rates from euros, the reason why I haven't done that is because as some of you will know, these designer brands, they don't have like one set price that you can just use an exchange rate calculator on. They tend to be very different percentage wise in different territories. So the prices here are only based on countries in the European Union. So prices haven't just risen between seven and 17%. It looks like they've risen between four and 25%. And you wait until I kind of tell you where those prices have come in. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk as well about possibly why they might have done it now and I'm also gonna talk about my opinions of it and does it put me off the brand? Would I still be buying, will I still be buying their stuff after this? Chanel do price increases, they all do, all of the brands do. Sometimes they do it like a couple of times a year. I know that Louis Vuitton did a price rise in, was it February? And they've done another one as well in May. I think on the 5th of May they did it. Again, why you do it in the middle of a global pandemic, I do not have a clue. It's very insensitive, I think. But the boy bags, so they, the way that they've structured the price increases. I was on the website yesterday, I'm gonna show you here, and I noticed for the first time that I've ever seen, the prices for the bags have been removed on the UK website. So normally all of the prices on the UK site, by law they have to be shown, and it's kind of price and application was written under all of the bags. This isn't the case for the shoes, the prices on the shoes were still displayed. Prices on, I think, SLGs were still displayed, but prices on things like wallet on chains, those little um, vanity cases on chains, prices have all come off for that as well. And the first thing that made me think is, you are cooking up some more prices for us right now, and maybe those prices aren't gonna affect jewelry as well. Costume jewelry, prices are still on there. So I'm guessing, that the price rises are only going to apply to bags and wallet on chains. Boy bags have risen by four, between four and 5%. They've obviously gone through the most popular bags and anything that's really popular, they've smashed it up with an insane price increase. So quite clearly from what I'm gonna show you, boy bags are probably not as popular. And I think that kind of makes sense because I remember when they first launched in like 2012, I think it was, they were really popular. They felt fresh. They felt a bit different to um, like the classic stuff. But for me, those bags have got some issues. They get saggy bottom issues and, I, I, and they don't wear very well in my experience because of those sharp edge corners. So I do tend to prefer the classics and they tend to hold their value a bit better as well. 
So boy bags have risen by between four and five percent. The classics, and here's where it really gets quite distasteful in my opinion, some of the classics have risen by as much as 25%. There are bags that are now over 7,000 euros. 7,000 euros for a bag, seriously. The most I think I've ever spent on a bag has been, and this made me feel a bit sick, it was the Chanel Jumbo Classic Flap that I bought back in uh, 2016. And I bought that for, I think it was four and a half thousand. And even that was the, that's the most expensive bag I've got. And it was one of those that I bought and I, and I bought it cause I'd always wanted it, wanted it. And I knew the price was only going to go up, but honestly the price of that bag now, I would never buy it for that money. And I'm going to talk about the pre-loved market, secondhand market, because for me, I was someone who wouldn't have necessarily bought so much secondhand before and that's not due to any snobbery it's simply due to the fact that i always worry about being able to buy something that is um genuine the small classic flap which was a bag that i said at the beginning of this year i was like i really want to get a small square classic flap i could cry it's over three thousand euros it's gone up, that has gone up allegedly by 25%. These are really big price increases. This isn't like Louis Vuitton, their price increases. I think from what I've seen, their price increases at the top end are 20%. But on things like the Speedy, I think they've increased things by like 60 euros. It's, it's still like the wrong time to be doing it, but it's not kind of increasing it by hundreds or, or even thousands. So I'm, I am really confused and I, I, I think, I, as I say, I wonder whether there's more to this than meets the eye and there's things to do with those companies that maybe we haven't realised. In the UK, I was talking yesterday to uh, someone I know that works at Chanel and I asked about the price increase because do you remember the trainers that I said in the last video I did? So she actually messaged me um, because Chanel don't sell online and I, I did question how are they going to get through this because from what I, I'm, I'm imagining, I think we're going to have lockdown after lockdown. I think we're all going to come out and then it's going to rise again and then we're going to go back in. That's the way I'm imagining it's going to go. And I thought, how is Chanel going to manage and get through this if they're not selling online? And if they're going potentially months, I mean, they've been two months already without selling anything. How are they going to get through that? Hello, me again. So the person that I spoke to, I uh, forgot to mention this. She mentioned to me that for the first time ever, uh, Chanel have started processing remote sales. Um, and by that, I understood that to mean uh, over the telephone sales where you pay over the phone and then they ship it out to you. So for any of you who are longing to buy anything, then maybe give your local boutique a call and see if they can help you. I don't know whether she also meant that they might be optimizing the website to buy stuff as well, because you can also, you can already buy makeup and things like that, but she might also have meant that you can start buying the bags on there. I'm not sure, but definitely she said remote sales are now in the UK up and running. Now, I always thought that the reason why Chanel never sold online is I feel, let me know what you think about this. I feel that when with Chanel doing that, they're maybe trying to create a gravitas around the brand where it's slightly harder to get hold of. It's, um, it's less obtainable than brands such as Dior, where I find Dior as a brand really obtainable. Not, I'm not talking price, I'm talking about accessibility to it. Um, being able to get hold of products, the generally speaking, the friendliness of staff in store and how um, I've always found them quite easy to get hold of people. Whereas with Chanel, it's a bit more of a closed ship. Whenever I go in there, I find them not always the most friendly um, or the most forthcoming. Um, and I did wonder whether the reason why they were trying, they were not selling online is because they're trying to kind of keep it in. I mean, remember, what was it two years ago where there was a lawsuit where Chanel were trying to stop people selling their own stuff secondhand? I'm going to link to that video below. That was crazy. So I think this is possibly to do with Chanel trying to create an aesthetic around their brand elevate it a bit, make it less accessible, make it so it's in-store only. The other thing that she told me when I asked about the price rise is that in the UK, it hasn't happened yet, 
but it's going to happen and she didn't know when it was going to happen but i would imagine it's gonna if it's in the eu already i would imagine it's going to happen in the next week to two weeks chanel i think have been quite clever with this because they've created a price increase at a time where they've taken the prices offline and they're hoping everyone's forgotten how much stuff was no one can go in store at the moment. It's basically quite a quiet time if you think about it. A lot of us maybe aren't thinking so much about luxury because we can't go anywhere to wear it anyway. And so it's a time where they can maybe do a little sneaky price rise. And then once we're all let out and the shops open back up again, it's like, no, that bag was always seven grand. What are you talking about? The rumor is that the US aren't going to get the, the steep, price percentage increases that have happened in the EU. I don't know what you're gonna get. I know from, from one of you in the UAE, you said that the prices have gone up between seven and 17%. In Europe, it's looking like four and 25%. I don't know what it's gonna be in the UK, what the percentage rises are gonna be. I, I also wonder whether Chanel are also waiting a bit to look at each territory to find out economically how things are looking um, after lockdowns have ceased with COVID. I'll tell you why, because I was kind of thinking in my head, well, if for example, let's say one country gets really hot, hit hard with it and the economic downturn in that country is worse than somewhere else where the deaths haven't been as much or maybe the economy has done a bit better it's kind of balanced out a bit then i would imagine that chanel would think well okay that that place kind of has done quite badly so we'll put the prices up but not as much as over here where we think they can stomach it a bit more so i did wonder whether if the price rises are slightly different everywhere whether that chanel kind of sitting back waiting to see how things are going to go and then deciding to put the prices up once they've figured out how e each country is doing. Okay, so if you were to ask me for my opinion on this, whether, whether I would still buy from Chanel after this, and what I think about it, what I think about the timing. First of all, I think that to put the prices up right now is really, it shows that you're really out of touch, in my opinion. It's a very scary, uh, delicate time and I think of all of the times ever to decide to go and put your prices up I really don't think that now is it Chanel is expensive enough as it is and I personally don't think that their quality matches the prices that they were already charging before the price rise if after the price rise they were going to start guaranteeing that things weren't going to break and that the quality of stuff was going to hold up better and pearls and earrings weren't going to drop out then it would still it, i would still be thinking that it was obscene money but i would also you know at least there would be something for it i think from a pr perspective i think that in my opinion i think that this is really bad so here's the thing during the you know particularly in the early part of the um coronavirus pandemic back back in February, March, you had brands um, such as Givenchy, um, Bulgari, you had car brands like Ferrari, Lamborghini, all of these luxury brands that were getting together to use their workforce for the greater good. So you had um, Ferrari making ventilator parts, McLaren in the UK were actually making the ventilators, um, Lamborghini, uh, were making the, the like the face coverings you had Givenchy were making hand sanitizer so were Dior as well they were making um, you know alcoholic hand sanitizer and and I tell you what it in a way it actually warmed my heart to see it when they were when all these brands were on social media sharing the things that they were doing I thought how nice how nice is that I mean I tell you what Burberry in the UK are a brand that in a way I feel really sorry for because they're a heritage brand but I don't feel that they've really smashed it. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't love their bags, I don't really love the designs of things, I feel that the Nova Czech um, kind of got quite damaged in the year 2000s, just my opinions, and I really want that brand as a British brand to kind of pick it up and be more, um, be more popular. But what Burberry 
did, particularly in the early days, was incredible. They were funding, and probably still are funding, um, the vaccine that was going on at Oxford University. They were giving money to charity. They were using their factories in Yorkshire where they normally make the Burberry trench coat. And I think they were making scrubs and face masks. They, they, they really, really supported the efforts of what was going on in this country to support the NHS. And I thought that was really, really lovely. So for all of those brands doing those things who were, who were stopping production of other stuff and using their their departments and their, their skilled workers to actually do things um, that were benefiting everyone. And then for Chanel, who I don't think did anything. Before I potentially say something that isn't correct, I wanted to have another look at Chanel and just make sure that this was the, the way I remembered it because I don't remember them putting anything on social media or on Instagram. I've just Googled Chanel and COVID-19 and this page has come up, which says that kind of goes over what they're doing. It says that they are giving, I think it's 2 million to urgent medical and healthcare needs in the US. But what, what I think is quite strange is on their, on their Instagram, um, they kind of went quiet after the 15th and then came back online on the 29th uh, just to post a kind of solidarity uh, message. But unlike a lot of the other brands, they weren't shouting about anything that they were doing in particular. So this is really what I mean when it comes to that sort of PR point of view. The other thing that I'm questioning is whether Chanel are doing this to try and change their cut their customer and the demographic of people that own and buy their bags. I've wondered for a while whether Chanel are trying to almost go down the Hermes route where they pick and choose the kind of person that might own a bag. This is just my, my thoughts, okay? And the reason for this is they don't sell online, so they've kind of, anyone who might be nervous about going into a boutique, it, that, that avenue isn't open to you. They're putting the prices up year on year on year. And they almost have, in a lot of stores, they almost have quite a frosty atmosphere in them. Whereas if you go in somewhere like Dior, Dior, I really feel if you go back sort of um, five or 10 years, they were, they were maybe a bit stuffy. They were kind of quite similar to Chanel. But I feel that since Maria has, has come in as creative director, they've really loosened it up. It feels a lot more youthful. Um, it's the kind of place where I really feel you can walk into a store and even if you're a bit nervous and apprehensive and you hadn't been into a store before, I pretty much feel it's the kind of place where you can chill out a bit after a while because the staff are so friendly. Generally speaking, I know not all of you have had that, but generally speaking, I find that to be the case. Whereas I wonder whether Chanel are putting up their prices because they are trying to reduce or change the sort of person that can afford to buy one of their bags. And that's also maybe why they're trying to stamp out the secondhand market, which I think was stupid. How can you do that? You can't sell someone something and then tell them that they, they can't ever sell it again or give it away if they want to, it's crazy. Tune back in on Sunday if you want to know more about what is going on with Louis Vuitton because they've been up to it as well. Uh, just crazy, I can't get my head around it. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Please share your thoughts below and also if you happen to have any more information that I haven't mentioned that I might not know about, please share that below as well. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.